In this episode, who wants to buy an Acura? Is it you? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, SRO delays GT2 and Mick to Mercedes. Welcome to episode 153 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rao, tis is the off season in the racing world. Mm-hmm. Do you know what that means? Uh, it means that there's like nothing going on and it's very boring. True. But do you know where you can go watch some racing? Ooh, I think I do. Where might that be? That would be at weareauto.io because... Our website is legit, and you, sir, have cataloged some of our favorite past series is, and you can go catch some of uh, those cool past races, right? Like uh, Champ Car, no, not Champ Car, uh, Trans Am, pardon me. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what else we got there. We got Porsche Career Cup, we've got IMSA, we got the WEC, we got Stadium Super Trucks, MX5 Cup, MX5 Cup, Ferrari Challenge, so many cool races. A bunch. I was adding some races, I think, last week as well. So. Go check it out. It is the off season. You need racing to watch. I know I do. We are auto.io. Go check it out. Sweet. So let's get into some news, shall we? Sure. Some racing news, more specifically. Uh, so you, you and I, we've had this conversation about what your next car should be. Mm-hmm. Right. Your ideal, attainable, kind of a sports car y kind of thing. And we talked about maybe some Honda S2000s. We talked about an Acura NSX. But Derek, alas, I have the answer for you. What might that be? That would be the Honda Performance Development Acura ARX 05 DPI car from Wayne Taylor Racing is now for sale and you should buy it. This is my daily. It is your daily, yes. Really? (laughs) A prototype (laughs) top class race car that... Loves to go around Daytona real fast. Yeah. I, uh, you could go to Publix in this. It would be brilliant. Hmm. Okay. It has a parcel shelf for your groceries. Sell me on it. and You, uh, could, you could hook your grocery bags around the mirrors. You know, Honda's good. Reliable. Acura, you know, sidearm of Honda. Okay. Could be nice and reliable. What are we talking about, Uh, you know, like... Price wise, um, uh, it's a it's a bargain. Really, uh, it's on Bring a Trailer, uh, and the, the the as of this past Friday, the uh, the the bid was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, and that was a week ago. So what is that now? I don't even know. Uh, <clears throat> dealer markups. It'll be at least a half a mil. <laughs> Easy peasy. You got this, right? <laughs> All right. Put that in the garage. Replace the Subaru. Huh. Perfect perfect family car. It'll fit a car seat nicely. So this car <clears throat> was racing probably at Petit Le Mans, right? It actually was. This is the actual car that was racing at Petit, at the Rolex, at Sebring, at like the whole last 2022 season. And last year was the last year of this car running, so they have no use for it anymore. Correct. I'm a little surprised to see it on the market this quickly. That was my thought, and I wanted to kind of pose you that that question of, why are they selling it so quickly? I would have thought it would have gone to, like, Honda's museum Mm -hmm. or Wayne Taylor's personal collection. Right. I don't know other than cash. Cash is king it's not cheap kind of feels like uh they're trying to sell this for some money it kind of does racing in general not cheap very (laughs) not cheap very that's a very polite way to put it yeah Mm -hmm. uh you want a good way to lose a lot of money get into racing (laughs) yes (laughs) you want to know how you become a millionaire start by being a billionaire and then go racing yes that's that's how you do that yeah uh but uh, will this move the needle for their team? Is three hundred and fifty grand enough? No, I don't think so. I think this is just neither Honda nor Wayne Taylor wanted it. So what are they going to do? Just get rid of it? I guess. What car? They're running an Acura, right? This mm-hmm. upcoming season. Yep. The, in the new LMDH rules, huh? They're just immediately ditching the old car. Yeah, they've they've moved on from the ex-girlfriend very quickly. 
Very quickly. Like, the season hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Surprisingly quickly. Yeah. I do suspect it will be bought by somebody who will enjoy this car. Will they track day it, you think? I hope I know what they do with it. What? HSR. Will HSR take that? Oh, hell yeah. I HSR will take any car that has previously run in racing. Yes. I suspect that the only person who's going to buy this car is going to be somebody in HSR. That'd be so cool to see that the next time we see, we go to like the HSR Classic 12 at Sebring. Yeah. Because you see that, then you also see the old Peugeot prototypes. Mm -hmm. Like how freaking cool could that be? And I suspect someone along those lines that has the Peugeot, has an old Corvette, has Mm -hmm. an old Porsche air cool or something, will be the one buying this car, Mm -hmm. which is good. That's probably the perfect person for this to go to. And I suspect that the HPD or the Wayne Taylor racing guys will give them everything they need, educate them as much as they need. And it will probably actually be a lot of fun to watch this thing race elsewhere. Yeah, it'd be a blast, especially when you're not going to have quite as much BOP crackdown on you. Nope. Just let her rip, tater chip. Yep. Take the air restrictors out and let it have fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, apparently, they're stating that over the past season, uh, this car has driven over 11,000 miles. That's a lot. That does seem like a lot. That's a lot in a In race how many races? Wow. Not that many races. That's impressive that they can also keep that car together for that long. Yeah. They didn't break the chassis and stuff into the tires. It's pretty cool. That is cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, this is the car that finished runner-up in the championship. Mm-hmm. Like, that's pretty wild that you could just go and buy it. Hey, you got If you have mil. the money. Yep. That's neat. If you have the money, you just go buy a DPI car. You can. I would suggest not, but you can. (laughs) I don't think this will be an appreciating asset. No, there's much more, uh, much better bang for the buck out there. Uh, I agree. Yeah, it seems interesting, but I really hope someone local to us buys it and takes it to HSR. Let me pose you the question. If you had $350,000 for a race car, what are you buying? I'm buying a Porsche Carrera Cup. A GT3 Cup car with a lot of spare tires. I think that's a better value. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Because you need more money in tires than you do in car. Could you buy a Ferrari Challenge 488? Yeah. I think so. You could buy most of them, but not the rest of everything you need. Okay. Like you could probably buy the car. But not the tools and the tires and the brakes and the, the everything else that you kind of need to race the car with. Yep. Hmm. Neat. So yeah, that's the Wayne Taylor Racing Acura DPI car. You can buy it if you want. I'll pass. <laughs> so a little more news, shall we? Sure. What small amount of news we have, seeing as how this is uh, like the weekend leading into Christmas. And well, there's not a whole lot of racing this time of year. No. So let's talk about a series, SRO, right? The Stefan Rattel series. Okay. So have you heard that SRO was trying to do a GT2 class? What the heck is GT2? That's what I said. Okay. So to (laughs) get the, the normal listeners up to speed, GT3 is a class. GT4 is a class. GT3 is faster than GT4. Uh, You will find the top class Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Porsches in GT3. Uh GT4, you'll find like the Caymans, the the slower stuff, Mm -hmm. right? Um, GT2, is that going to fit between the two? Is that going to be faster than (sighs) GT3? Is that just marketing? So... Huh. It's, how do I describe this? So the cars look more like GTLM cars from a couple of years ago. Oh so boy. They, but, but hold on though, because it's not. <laughs> okay. So the cars we're looking at right now are supposed to be GT2 class audi r8s look at the rear wing the rear wing is way bigger Mm -hmm. right the roof scoop where'd that come from 
I don't know. That have doesn't you, belong have, on an Audi. Have you seen an Audi R8 with a giant roof scoop? Not like a little roof, but huge, massive, hoovering roof scoop? That's never been there, and it should never be there. It's got different front arrow, different side arrow. So it's... I, I, I don't understand. Why are these series overcomplicating friggin' everything? I swear to God. Because what I'm understanding, and I don't understand much... But what I'm understanding is that GT2 will be an AM class, replacing GT3 AM with different kinds of cars. Hmm. Same cars, but different, that are supposed to be, even though they look faster, supposed to potentially be a few seconds slower, but not as slow as GT4. This is quite the pickle. What the (laughs) hell? Okay, so to my understanding... uh, it is odd right now that Pro and AM, at least in IMSA and the WEC, mm-hmm. are about to be the same car, right? Mm-hmm. The classes are the same car. They're mm-hmm. all GT3 homologated race cars, mm-hmm. which are fantastic race cars, and they work across international lines extremely well. There's just slight BOP differences for each series. Yep, easy, easy to fix for, for each series. The problem is it's weird to see a Pro racing alongside an am and they're all in the same car but they're in different classes that's Mm -hmm. weird so the solution that has been derived by the marketing and payment processing departments (laughs) is to take the gt3 car apply a whole bunch of fancy bits around the outside make the aero package different enough so visually to the fans it is different well hold on i'm going to pause Visually to the astute fans, they are different. Yes. Because if you're not a racing enthusiast, you'd think that just looks like a GT3 car. You're right. You're right about that. (laughs) But for the money that you're going to need to buy the aero kit for the GT2 spec aero kit, Uh that's where it matters. This sounds very similar to, do you remember back when Lama was running? They announced... We have a new package for your Le Mans race car. Mm-hmm. And it was a GT3 aero kit that was specifically designed for just Le Mans. Which was like zero aero at all. It was trim everything out as much as possible because Le Mans is just straightaways. That's fine. Pretty much the Daytona aero. The problem is it's a separate aero kit and you have to buy it from the ACO, which runs the Le Mans race. So. Yes. This is money. This is exactly what's going on, in my opinion, in GT2. Money changing hands for slight differences to allow you to run in this series. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. Now, I don't like that GT3 is the same Pro and AM. That's also not the best fan experience. I agree. But from the manufacturer, team, competitor side the series side it all makes sense it's all so easy it is i agree now we gotta make it complicated yes why and this is most specifically in the intercontinental gt challenge oh boy which we had this discussion last week of the 15 trillion sro series that there are the IGTC, which was not very well, uh, let's see, advertised? No. It was just it's like, I just don't. Ah, that's the one. Down, middle. There you go. So if you jump to the website, our website, mm-hmm. uh, you can watch 2022 and 2021. Let's go take a look at what was in 2022. We have three races. There was actually four that were completed. I think I'm still waiting for them to upload one of them. Mm -hmm. But Bathurst, 12 hours, Spa, 24, and Indianapolis, 8 hours. Why do we need a whole separate class with some weird aero kits on a GT3 chassis just for a series that runs four races a year? This is a bad idea. I don't get it. This is really weird. It just seems odd. I don't understand it at all. It just seems odd. Hmm. But apparently it's delayed until 2024. They were trying to push it for 2023, but they're just not ready. What a shame. 
<laughs> what, what a shame. Now, do you think that IMSA in the WEC in the other series no. will start to pick this up? No. So will this just die by the hands of the ACO? It's not the ACO. It's the SRO. Or sorry, it's SRO. the other O. Yeah. In case that's not confusing Man, enough. Could you imagine being a newcomer to the sports car world? No, it's terrible. SRO, ACO, WEC, IMSA, oh, IGTC, TC America, GT America. Oh my God. That's why I made our website. DTM. What else? We, oh, uh, ADAC, uh, BTCC. Man. Just to explain to somebody. Hey, it's your first time at the Sebring 12 Hours. Oh, there's a race going on, but there are five different races happening in the same race. <laughs> there will be five different winners because we have five classes. And this but is But there's only one be, overall winner. Yeah. Only one overall, and then each car has 3 to 5 drivers in it, and every one of those <laughs> also gets points and wins and whatnot. Yeah. It, their eyes glaze over so fast. Oh, it's amazing trying to have that conversation. You lose them in exactly 8.3 seconds. Yeah, every time. It's kind of ridiculous. And now we're going to add GT2, which sounds like it should be faster than GT3, but it's slower than GT3 and faster than GT4. Brilliant. And amateur, but not pro, even though it sounds like GT2 should sound like a pro class, not an AM class. Oh, my God. I don't understand how a sport with so many engineers and technical know-how manages to mess up common sense marketing as bad as they do. It's because they're so goddamn smart. Is that the problem? Yes. They're too smart for they're their own good? They're too smart for that. You might be right. I think they're too smart to acknowledge the fact that to a regular human being, this is just like, what, 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 what is go, huh? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Weird. Hopefully, so, yeah. this continues to get delayed. <laughs> Sounds like you're not uh, super stoked for uh, GT2. Not at all. All right. Well, then, uh, you ready to move on to the next bit of news? Sure. And it has to do with Mr. Mick Schumacher. Because he, up until recently, was unemployed. Okay. So, do you remember this whole Haas talk about Mick Schumacher saying goodbye and... Hulkenberg coming in to step in. So it was a Hulkenberg Magnuson pairing for this coming year for Haas. Right. And Mick was, well, looking for scraps. So where'd he go? He went to Mercedes. Oh boy. As a reserve driver. Hmm. Which is interesting because where did his father finish out his racing career? In Mercedes. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. That checks out. It does. Mm, now, Michael this Schumacher. gives me a reason to actually like Mercedes. Damn it! Does it? Damn it! I know that the junior driver Mer for Mercedes used to be Mr. George Russell. Well, and then it was also... Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, and then he got brought up, and look what he's done. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Better than Mr. Lewis Hamilton this year. Huh. Now, how long until he gets an actual Mercedes ride? Never. Not for the foreseeable future, I can tell you that. Is this a good choice for him? Uh, it's his only choice for him. You think so? He had no seat in F1 at all. There's that. He w Okay, would you rather go home and twiddle your thumbs while you're watching your buddies race? Or would you rather at least be taking part and be present at every single Grand Prix and do time on the sim and testing and all of the things that are support elements for an F1 team. Die in IndyCar. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. Yes, we know IndyCar is where F1 drivers go to die. Uh huh. I don't want to see Mick Schumacher's career die yet. I like him. I don't After either. all, you know what my niece calls me? What? Mick. Really? Yeah. That's cool. So I kind of have to root for him. Plus, I was a do. big fan of his dad. Who wasn't a fan of his dad? But I don't... It might be a little too late for the, you know, living up to dad's fame. That's past. Yeah. There's no way. So, 
if you're not going to live up to the fame, what are you still doing in F1? Making money and staying around race cars. Because you probably just love racing. If you love racing, you probably want to go race. You know where you can go race? Let me guess. Uh, Indy. Anywhere else but F1. Anywhere. IMSA, the WEC, ACO, SRO. Put some O's in there. I don't care. Anywhere. (laughs) LMNO. Sure. (laughs) Formula E for all I care. Oh, shut up with Formula E. I hope that dies like GT2. But a reserve driver for Mercedes? How are you going to fund your possible SRO, ACO, LMNO, PQRS? Your last name is Schumacher. It's done. Click the hands. It's done. We will take you in any car. You think it would work that way with his last name? Yes. I agree. (laughs) He has an FIA license to drive an F1 car right now. His last name is Schumacher. What more do you want? You can drive anything under the sun. But what does he do? A backup driver at Mercedes. He can drive almost anything under the sun except a Haas. (laughs) Unfortunately for him, yes. Which is probably honestly not his fault that they're doing too bad. It's just Haas in general. But don't get me started. I actually think it's good for him to get away from Haas because I hate to say this, but Haas is the prelude to Indy. <laughs> oh shucks the prelude to getting out of corrupt crazy f1 and into a sport where you can actually get a car and run every race <laughs> what a shame look at you being all optimistic what a shame but i feel like haas is so bad that they are not fully in f1 they're like just the step between Indy and f1 you're not wrong about that but it's my hot take sorry Go be a backup driver at Mercedes? Unless George Russell or Lewis Hamilton stuff it into a wall hard enough to give them a concussion or break their legs, they're not going to be out of the car. You're driving the whole... Are you claiming you're going to go break Lewis Hamilton's legs? I'm claiming he's going to break his own legs by stuffing into a barrier. (laughs) Which is unlikely in these modern day F1 cars. Well, yes, but do you remember how well he drove this past season? Not great, but do you remember how many DNFs he had? One. One. True. So, and I think that the last race of the season was the only race where he actually had race damage. Mm. I don't foresee him getting many seats in real races. Obviously, he won't have a chance at the championship, but I don't... Does George retire anytime soon? No. Does Lewis retire anytime soon? That's another question. That's the question. Because Lewis Hamilton... I, okay, here's what I'm going to say. If Lewis Hamilton doesn't win the World Drivers' Championship in 2023, he then retires within the next two years. In that case, this is a great move. That's my prediction. If Hamilton does not win the World Drivers' Championship in 2023, I bet you he retires within two more years. Let's assume he retires in two years. Do you think that they take Schumacher up to the seat? Or do they take someone else from Red Bull, Ferrari, a young driver, an F2 driver, and put them in the seat? As much as I want to believe that they'll take Schumacher and throw Mick a seat. Yeah. Unless he wows them. If he wows them as a reserve driver, then yes. Your last name should not just get you a seat in F1. I totally agree. I totally agree. I don't like the move. I don't like the move. You just don't like anyone that doesn't go to Indy. That's not true. It's not for everyone. Or but NASCAR. It's not, once your career is dead in F1, which I would debate this is the start of the death of his career in F1, Ooh. it's probably time. Ooh. Yeah. Retirement hits hard. You're right, it does. (laughs) Retirement is rough for some. Yep. All right, so that's all the news I got for you. Now, I I do need to report on potential upcoming races. There's none. Great. Until January, I think, in Dubai. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's the next 24? time we have a race. The, yeah, Dubai 24? Yeah. Which is either put on by SRO, ACO, IGTC, GT World, GTWC, GT, <laughs> I don't know, one of them. Right. When is the Bathurst? I think it's 12? in oh, February. It's in May. What? I thought it was in February. May 14th. When is it in 2022? 22. Or 2023? Uh, let me do this. February 3rd through the 5th. Yeah, so February. Okay. Right? So we got Dubai, then Bathurst. Mm-hmm. And that's for weeks from now. Well, we got the Rolex before that. What? Well, y- yes, but we've got Dubai, Rolex, Rolex Bathurst. Bathurst, but nothing until Dubai. True. So there's that. So that's all I got. You got anything else? I do not. All right. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please uh, leave a thumbs up on the video and drop a comment. Let us know which uh, which race you're most excited to see: Dubai, Rolex, or Bathurst. And uh, don't forget, hit subscribe. Please and thank you. And also, please do leave us a five star rating on your platform of choice if you're listening on audio only. Right, Apple, Spotify, Google, all that kind of stuff. And don't forget to follow us on social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website is We Are Auto.io. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.